Alright, so this is part three of the Celestron CPC Deluxe 1100 HD uh, telescope overview. And now we're at the meat and potatoes of the telescope. We have the OTA and, of course, the uh, fork mount. Now, the OTA is uh, one of Celestron's new Edge HD um, optical tube assemblies. And basically, where this differs from a normal Celestron Smith Cassegrain is that in the back, inside the telescope, in the, uh, the baffle tube, uh, they have some extra glass in there now. That's basically a couple of lenses that act as a built-in field flattener. Uh, so it flattens out the field um, and uh, gets rid of uh, coma. And basically coma is, you know, where all the stars at the edge of the field of view look like little tiny comets. It makes them look kind of flared out. It uh, gets rid of that. Um, so that takes care of that problem. Um, comes with a standard 9 by 50 uh, finder scope. It's mounted in this ring dovetail system, which actually can slide off as one unit. And uh, there's actually an accessory you can buy, which mounts in the same place, and it's basically a mount to uh, piggyback your uh, your SLR camera or any camera. That uh, might be an interesting accessory to, to get later on. Then we have the corrector plate, which you probably can't see, but that's good. It's a glass here on the front. 11 inch, 279 millimeters. Your focal length, 2800. So that brings us to focal ratio of F10. And then we have our Starbright XLT coatings and all the mirror surfaces in the, uh, in the corrector plate and our Edge HD optics. And I was telling you earlier, the uh, this is a fast star compatible telescope. And basically, what that means is, is that you can remove the secondary mirror. Uh, basically, this retaining ring here comes off, and then you can lift the uh, the secondary mirror out of the telescope. And then, uh, basically, what you do is um, Star Arizona sells this uh, peripheral called the uh, Hyperstar, and it's basically a lens assembly that pretty much replaces the, uh, the secondary mirror and it turns your telescope from an f10 uh, to a f2 uh, focal ratio and basically the light that enters the telescope instead of bouncing back up to the secondary mirror and then back down through the baffle tube which you can see down there to the eyepiece it goes in bounces off the primary comes back up to the uh, the hyperstar lens and then on the end of the hyperstar lens you'll have your camera and so uh, you can take a uh, really wide view, uh, build, bah, excuse me, really uh, wide fill um, astrophotos, and you can do it a lot faster than you could uh, the traditional way because it turns your telescope into a much faster uh, imaging platform. So that's definitely something I will look into uh, later on. Uh, there'll probably be a little ways away from that because the uh, the hyperstar lens assembly is quite expensive so we'll probably delve into that sometime hopefully next year and then uh, on the back of the OTA you have your focuser and of course it's got this nice anodized orange uh, aluminum ring around it very nice touch um, this particular the Edge HD telescopes also come with uh, tensioning rods uh, they're kind of like mirror locks but not quite they don't actually lock the mirror down per se uh, basically these knobs are connected to a, uh, a tension rod that goes up into the tube and connects with the back of the primary and when you put uh, tension on those rods it kind of puts tension on the uh, primary and keeps it uh, in one place so you don't have the issue of uh, mirror flop and that's something that uh, a lot of SCTs are prone to is whenever you're moving the telescope, uh, especially uh, up over the, uh, the meridian, uh, gravity tends to kind of tug on that, uh, that primary mirror and can actually move it. And that's basically to keep it uh, stationary. Because you definitely uh, don't want that to happen while you're imaging, because that'll definitely ruin your entire photo. Um, here we have the altitude clutch. And here we have the 
azimuth clutch. It allows you to spin the telescope around. Same with the uh, altitude. The hand controller for the cradle. And then on the back, we have the uh, the input jack for the power, which has it has a threaded jack. That's where that uh, the threading ring on the uh, the connector will thread onto and you know, keep it in place. Then we have our hand control port, two auxiliary ports, PC port, and of course a auto guider port. And here's our power switch on and off. Now I heard that uh, on the the older CPC models, the non-HDs, uh, the red light on the uh, power switch is very bright and kind of kind of annoying. Well, I can definitely tell you that this one they've toned it down quite a bit, so it's not going to be a problem anymore. Um, the whole thing itself, the tube and the fork mount, weighs I think about 65 pounds, so it's pretty heavy. Um, and of course, when you first look at it, you can tell. Well, hey, there's a handle on one end, but if you look on the other, well, what the hell? There's none there. Well, actually, there is. The handle is on this side, just your normal carrying handle. But if you look on the other side, underneath, you have a slot right here to put your hand. Basically, you put one hand in that slot, and then the other uh, use it to uh, grab the handle. And basically, uh, with that configuration of carrying the uh, telescope, it, it seems to make it a hell of a lot easier to move it around. It's still heavy, but it's very manageable. So that's good. Like I said, uh, getting it to, to mount on the, on top of the uh, tripod head, getting it uh, to line up with that pin, it can be kind of a pain in the ass sometimes. Um, I'm trying to think of what else I can say about it. That is definitely a gorgeous telescope. Oh, here we go. Uh, these vents here, uh, basically these vents are to help cool down the, uh, the telescope. Uh, basically, when you're bringing this outside, um, of course the air outside may be cooler, but the inside air of the telescope is still going to be at room temperature. And uh, basically these vents are just here to kind of help equalize the, uh, the temperature inside the tube faster than if they weren't there. And it's covered in a nice, uh, fine, looks like steel or aluminum mesh to keep out dust and all that good stuff. And they actually have a, uh, an accessory you can get. I think it's also made by uh, Star Arizona. Um, basically, the same thing, the secondary with the Fast Star. You take out the secondary, but instead of putting in a, uh, a Hyperstar lens assembly, you put in a fan unit that screws on, and it pretty much blows... Uh, I think it either blows or pulls air, I'm not sure, but it pretty much uh, will definitely speed up the the cooling of your telescope. Look at the, uh, the optics, very nice, very clean. Starbright XLT coating sticker there, very nice. So it's a very very nice telescope. Um, definitely one that will keep me busy for years to come. Um, brand new, this will set you back a pretty penny. It's uh, the retails up for about 3,700. So, uh, but you know what? I think it's uh, I think it's worth it. It's definitely a beautiful telescope. Oh, one other thing. Uh, just like the uh, the older model uh, CPCs, this does have a GPS unit inside of it, so um, that will make uh, your life a little bit easier when you're aligning it. It will download your your time, the date, and uh, your location automatically. So it'll help uh, speed along um, your alignment procedures. You don't have to use it, but it is there. All right, well there we go. I'm sure I'm forgetting something, but I'll remember eventually. I think I'll do one more video, maybe a slew test to show you how it, you know how it moves and how it sounds. And I think that will do it.